Britain fires its first H-bomb to join the United States and Russia as ranking atomic powers. When the mushroom cloud went up, all the different colours and everything in the canopies. After that, the flash, we were told to turn the spikes on it. After that came the blast, and you could feel the wind just about knocking you off your feet. Eric Barton's now 81. In 1962, as a young soldier, he was posted to Christmas Island, witnessing 24 nuclear tests dressed in nothing more than his summer uniform. <laughs> nothing really, just hat, shorts and boots. Uh, you could, you could, well, you, some were wearing Hawaiian shirts and anything. Just anything, you know, just walking around. For decades, veterans like Eric have been fighting for recognition. This week, 70 years after Britain's first nuclear test, it came. The Prime Minister attending a ceremony at the National Memorial Arboretum to announce a new nuclear test medal honouring the contribution of all the veterans, scientists and local employees who helped develop Britain's nuclear deterrent. That His Majesty the King has decided to recognise that service formally by creating a new medal to honour those who helped develop our independent nuclear deterrent. Between 1952 and 1967, the UK carried out a series of tests in Australia and the South Pacific developing weapons with far more power than the original atom bombs dropped on Japan. The tests made Britain the world's third nuclear power after America and the Soviet Union. It's the first time in you know, 60, 70 years that they've been recognised for what these people have done. And as you heard from all the veterans, it's significant for them because they feel they have contributed to Britain's nuclear deterrent that they feel, and I feel, have kept us safe for over uh, 50 years and uh, while they were there a long long time ago is really important to them and I think it's important for the state to recognise that as well. An estimated 22,000 personnel took part in those tests. It was the biggest single military event since D-Day a few years earlier. Of the men that now remain, most are now in their 80s but many of their comrades are no longer here. They developed health problems, cancers and infertility and many didn't live beyond their 50s. When the bomb went off, I felt I'd seen the end of the world. John Morris was posted to Christmas Island as an 18-year-old and witnessed four atomic tests. I have had pernicious anemia since I was 24. I have injections every three months. That is systematic to radiation affecting blood cells. I've had cancer and currently I'm still here. Out of my unit, I am the only one that I am aware that is still here. Five of my very, very good friends all died with cancer. Over the years, the government's commissioned three scientific inquiries into possible health risks from the tests. The latest in 2003 found no detectable effect on the men's life expectancy or risk of cancer. While the US and Fiji have paid their veterans compensation, the UK so far has not. You know, the science is not clear in this space um, and there's you know, no cover-up or no blocking towards that happening. It's just an unclear picture. But veterans can apply to the no-fault compensation scheme already and veterans have and nuclear test veterans have and receive payouts. So, um, you know, we're, we're keen to continue that work and continue that conversation. Government's funding a £450,000 history project to capture these servicemen's stories. The new medal will also be awarded posthumously to those that are no longer here. For these servicemen, this medal means a lot. Another step on their long journey for recognition. Simon Newton, Forces News at the National Memorial Arboretum.